Hello and welcome to this video, part of the Getting Started series for V-Ray for Cinema 4D. First up, we need to make a camera. We can press Cinema 4D's camera button and add a physical camera tag to it, or go to the V-Ray menu and add a camera from there. Once we've made a camera, we can pick the canvas we want to render from the render settings by typing in its dimensions. and choosing one of the predefined film aspect presets. We can always make a new render setting set if we need a different aspect ratio. We can start by tweaking some of the camera parameters, like the field of view or focal length. A lower value for the focal length gives us a wider angle view, allowing the camera to see more of the scene a higher number in this parameter results in a more focused or narrower field of view. Let's start an interactive rendering session so we can see some of the other camera settings. Before we go further, we can choose our camera type. Now let's focus on our physical camera parameters. As you see, the default exposure might not be great so we might start with an overexposed or underexposed shot, so we need to adjust it. The exposure works just like it does with a physical camera, and it can be tweaked using three different values, part of the so-called exposure triangle, the ISO, the F number, and the shutter speed. We need all three to be perfectly balanced so we get the right exposure for our shot. If our shot is too dark, we can increase the ISO number to make it brighter. Lower F number values will open up the camera's aperture wider, making a bigger opening and allowing more light to come through, which means a brighter image. Since our shot is way too dark, we can increase the ISO number significantly to make it brighter. So if I set the ISO to 6400, for example, you can see that it brightens everything up. Let's reset it, and let's see how the F number affects the image. Lower values will open up camera's aperture wider, or to put it simply, it will make the opening bigger, allowing more light to come through and hit our CG sensor. More light always equals a brighter image. I will reset it for now since we will adjust it later on to direct our viewer's attention to specific parts of the image. The last part of our exposure triangle is the shutter speed. It controls how long our aperture stays open and collects light, so the longer you let it stay open, the brighter your images will get. Once again, lower values here also produce a brighter result. Let me just reset it to its default value too, since it controls the blur of any moving objects as well. And we'll take a look at that a bit later in this video. Alternatively, we can use the exposure value mode where a single value controls the exposure for our shot. Higher values will darken the shot and lower values will brighten it up. This way, we can choose an EV value for this particular camera angle. Next, we'll look at the white balance of our image. We can choose a white balance that will make the image look warmer or cooler or aim for a more natural white balance. We can also use the auto exposure and auto white balance settings. In this way, we won't need to think about exposure and white balance settings and let V-Ray do that automatically for us. We do that by enabling those two settings under the camera in the override tab. To make those settings work, we need light cache to be enabled from the GI tab. And we also need to have light cache activated for the interactive rendering so we can see the proper results in our interactive sessions. That setting is under the shading rollout in the interactive tab. Now, when we start an interactive rendering, you can see that the exposure and the white balance are being set automatically for us. Let me turn them off for now so we can explore more settings in our physical camera. Next, let's address the vignette settings. 
This is a great way to focus the viewer's attention toward the center of the image by darkening the corners. We can also take advantage of the depth of field by enabling it from the depth of field and motion blur tab. Right away, you'll see that some parts of our image are out of focus or blurred. To choose a focus point, we could use Cinema 4D's built-in focus picker and select an object in the scene. Alternatively, we could also just right-click in the VFB and choose a set focus point, which will set the camera focus point exactly where we have clicked. If we set a lower F number, we tell V-Ray to render a shallower depth of field, which will result in even blurrier parts. Let's choose a lower value so we can see that in action. We also have a greater control over the appearance of the out-of-focus parts, like highlights or lights. Under the Bokeh effects rollout, we can define their shape with the plate number, We can rotate them, make them more concentrated or hollow in the center with the bias value. And stretch them in vertical or horizontal manner. We can also simulate a real-world or artistic looks by loading in a texture in the file slot and have that drive their look and even affect the overall exposure if we wanted to. Next is the motion blur. Once enabled, we need some moving objects in our shot to see it in action. I have animated this DSLR camera to spin 360 in just under a second, giving us fast movement, which will illustrate perfectly how motion blur works. If we do a render on the 10th frame, you can see a bit of motion blur. If we'd like to make it more pronounced, we can use the camera shutter speed for that. Setting it lower will effectively make the shutter stay open for a longer period of time, resulting in more motion blur. So if I go for a low number, just for the sake of making an extreme example of it, you'll notice that the camera gets much blurrier than before. Finally, let's look at the lens effects. If we expand the right drawer in the VFB, we can see a layer called Lens Effects. Once we enable it, you can see we instantly get some bloom and glare. We can choose the size and intensity of the lens effects and add additional ones like scratches, which will simulate flaws on the glass of our digital lens. Those are physical imperfections accumulating on the lens and resulting in realistic and quite interesting effects. And with that, you now understand the camera and lens effects in V-Ray for Cinema 4D. I highly recommend watching the remaining Getting Started videos in this series where we cover various other topics.